In this video, we're gonna derive the first four moments of a standard normal distribution in two different ways. One, we're gonna use moment generating functions, and then the other, we'll just use the <coughs> standard definition of when expectation comes into it. And then we will prove very easily, very quickly, all the moments of a standard normal distribution. Okay, and I'd like to note that this video is for my dad who wanted his sister, Linda, who I've always called the world champion arm wrestler to know about these. We're gonna use this later when in, a, in the next video actually when we're in the multiple regression setting and we wanna find an unbiased quadratic estimator for the variance and that minimizes the, the variance of that estimator. Anyway, but for now, we will look at the moment generating functions and we're not gonna derive the moment generating function of a standard normal, but it is this. We're gonna leave that as another video. And so to find moments, we have to take derivatives of this. So let's take the first derivative of this moment generating function which is this. So the derivative of this, you get it back and then the chain rule says times the derivative of that. And, and so this is it. But I'm gonna write it in terms of, of this being last. Okay, and you'll see why in a second. Then the second derivative, we, we take the derivative of this. So it's the derivative of the first, which is one times the second, uh, plus the, the first times the derivative of the second, which is this, and then we can factor out an e to the, the tx squared, and we, and we get this. And then the third moment would be the derivative of this, which is that times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second, and then we can factor out this term on both of them, and we get this. The uh, Fourth moment, it would be the derivative of this, which is this, and again, we factor this out. Now, one note, which I'll refer to in a second, notice that we have this number times a polynomial. This number times a polynomial. Uh, this number times a polynomial, okay? Um, I'll mention that in a second. So then it, this becomes uh, plugging in zero for each of these that we just determined. So the first moment is the first derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at zero, and that is zero. So you plug in zero here and zero there, you get zero. The second moment is the second derivative evaluated at zero, second derivative of the moment generating function, and we get one. So if we plug in zero here and zero here, this is one and we get zero, the one is left over. Now, the, the third moment is plug in zero to this equation, zero, zero, one, the whole thing is zero. And it turns out every odd moment is zero. And then the fourth moment is plug in zero to here. So we get one, zero, zero, three. So the third, the fourth moment is three. Now, I'm gonna put a note here and it's quite fascinating for the general moment. So not, not odd, so two, four, six, eight. Um, I'm gonna reference you to Hermite polynomials, which are orth, uh, one, class of orthogonal pol polynomials. And then once you find the Hermite polynomials, then you look at the, the, the leading coefficient, or actually maybe it's the trailing coefficient if you write it in the reverse order. And then that becomes the, um, the moment, the nth moment when it's positive. So now let's look at these ex uh, using expectation. So again, this is our you know, standard normal. This is our density of a standard normal. And uh, a couple notes that we will use in the video is that F is even. So if you plug in minus Z um, here, you know, since that's squared, it cancels out and we just get F of Z back. And then 
if we let g of x equal x times f of x, then this, or g of x, is odd, which says if you plug in a negative, then it's like bringing that out front. So it's the negative of g of x, and we're going to make that make use of that. Because when you integrate odd functions, then uh, nice things happen. So here's the first definition. Uh, the uh, first moment is this. Now if we break that up into two different integrals going from zero to infinity and, and, and negative infinity to zero, then we can rearrange this. So if we let x equal minus y, we can do a transformation, then dx is equal to minus dy. And then we plug this into this piece only. So this comes down here, we get minus y, we plug in f of minus y, and then the, uh, uh, the dx is minus dy. Well, that negative cancels with this negative, and f of x, we said, was an even function. So we just get, we get this. Okay. Now note that we're going from negative infinity to zero. So if we want to switch the limits of integration, then we have to bring out a negative out front. And so we get this, zero to infinity of that minus zero to infinity of this. And since the x and y are dummy variables, we could change them all to w, then this is zero. And you, I should point out that from this point right here, you should really just say, oh, it's zero. Because x, f of x is an odd function, which we said here. So if you integrate an odd function from, say, minus a to a, it's always zero. And here we're going from minus infinity to infinity. So you should instantly just say, oh, that's zero. So now let's look at x squared. So this, by definition, is this. And then now we're going to use integration by parts. So if we let u be x, so we're going to take one of these, and then du is dx, and then let dv be x, f of x dx, then you can show on your own that when the antiderivative of this is just minus x. Okay, there, not a lot of work, but you know more than what I'm showing here. So then the, it becomes uv, which is this, evaluated at its limits. And then it's minus duv, but this minus will cancel with that, making it a plus. And so we just have uh, in our f of x dx. Well, this, when we go to infinity, f of x goes to zero. And it actually goes so much faster than x, it that is zero. And also, when you plug in minus infinity to the standard normal distribution, this goes to zero. And it actually goes at a much faster rate. This goes to zero faster than that goes to infinity. So this whole thing is zero. And that's pretty straightforward to show also. So we're left with this piece. But if you integrate a density over its entire range, you get 1. So this becomes 0 plus 1. Well, that's 1. So the second moment is 1. Now the third moment, um, this is, um, this by definition of, is this. Now, if we uh, take one of the x's out and then put the x squared with this, it becomes a function like like this. But this, the g of x, which is x squared f of x, is an even function. Then you're multiplying it by x, it becomes an odd function. So this is an odd function, and we're integrating from negative infinity to infinity, so it instantly becomes zero. And you can use that trick for any odd exponent. Just take out one, and then what's left over is an even function, but you're multiplying it by x, becomes an odd function, and it always integrates to zero. So here's the fourth moment of, of x, or our standard normal. And I just noticed that when I introduced it, I said z. 
is, is standard normal, but I'm using X's here, so let's let X be standard normal. And this is it. So if we let U be X cubed, and then the derivative of that is du 3x squared dx. And then the x that we didn't use here, we put over here. And the antiderivative becomes minus uh, f of x. So we plug those in. So it's uv goes here, and then duv goes here. And that minus makes, you know, switches the minus to a plus. Um, and this goes to zero at each of these limits much faster than that goes to infinity so this overall thing is zero and here <coughs> um, we're integrating um, for x squared f of x well by definition this is the expected value of x squared which we just showed was one so we get the answer is three so the fourth moment of a standard normal is three. Now let's prove it very quickly. Um, I have a half page left of how to do this for any even exponent. But I need to introduce something called a double exponential. And that is a double exponential is you take that number, then subtract two and multiply, and then subtract two from that and multiply. And then you keep going until you get to a 1 or a 2. And that's the definition of a double exponential. And then you can show that if you want to convert double exponential to, I mean a double factorial, dang it, to just an, a factorial is if n is even, then the double factorial is written in factorial form as this, and if it's odd, it's this. Okay, and I, and I'm not, I'm not going to show that, but there's videos or you can look it up to, to show how to get those two formulas. So now let's derive e to the 2m. Now, so this, so m is uh, from 1, to, you know, the natural numbers. So this exponent is always even. So by definition, it's this. And then let's uh, use integration by part. So let's take away one of those x's. So it's x to the 2m minus 1. The derivative is, is this. And then dv is this, which we uh, said earlier is just v is equal to minus f of x. So now you plug in uv into here, limits, and then it's uh, VDU, which is this. And if I take out the 2M minus 1 out of our integral sign, it's uh, this times F of X integrated over all limits. Well, that's just the expected value of 2M minus 1. Now, this, this goes to 0 much faster than that goes to infinity. So this just drops out. So this is the answer. So the it's a recursive formula. So e to the uh, 2m x to the 2m is equal to x to the 2m minus one times some constant. Well, if this is a recursive relationship, we can do it again. So then we can just if we want to find this moment. Well, it ends up being so we subtract another one. That's where we get this, and it's times this value and that and this is pretty easy to show well you keep doing this until this um, gets to um, just two you know it, it goes all the way down and then then you're finished but this right here do -do 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 -do, ends up being 2m minus 1 factorial and actually, so we're finished. So the answer is e to the x 2m is 2m minus 1 factorial. That is the answer. But now, when you look it up in books and on the internet, you may not see this as the answer to the, to the you know, positive moment of the standard normal. So you have, you know, they want, we'll have to use this relationship between double factorial and factorial. 
So if you plug in 2m minus 1, because it's odd, right? So this makes it even and we subtract 1, it's an odd number. We plug it into here, we get this, this formula, which is what you'll see in books and on the internet. So anyway, so this is the formula for uh, a positive moment of a standard normal distribution. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and like I said earlier, I'm going to use uh, actually Lagrange multipliers to find the uh, uh, quadratic estimator of the variance that minimizes the variance of that estimator. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.